as a constitutional law attorney, former senior legal advisor and personal counsel to President Donald J. Trump. Jenna Ellis believes in the rule of law and the importance of integrity in our elections. And she's ready to tackle the big cultural and legal issues facing America. This is The Jenna Ellis Show. Here is your host, Jenna Ellis. Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of The Jenna Ellis Show. I'm Jenna Ellis, and today I'm introducing to you my two newest little podcast hosts. This is Copper and Todd. They are uh, little mini golden doodles, and they are brothers, and I just picked them up last week while I was gone. So this is what I was doing on my vacation, and uh, (laughs) they are just such wonderful little puppies, and uh, they will join frequently. So um, just love them, and they have their own Instagram handle, which is two dudes, D-O-O-D-S for the dudes, two dudes underscore Uh, Copper and Todd, which is just with 1D. So you can follow them there. But today I'm very excited to be talking not just about puppies, but about babies, because we have to be the pro-life generation and the pro-life community. And so my next guest is going to be talking about the importance of life. She's going to share an amazing personal story herself and how we can best advocate not just for pro-birth, like the Democrats suggest, but also the whole life of a child supporting moms. And so we're going to be talking about all that and more coming up next. With inflation, the banking world collapse, and everything that Joe Biden is doing not to protect America, you need to make sure to secure your financial health, especially in retirement. And hey, if you're a millennial like me, that actually is sooner than you think. You need to start now, even if you are a millennial or a Gen Zer, to make sure that your financial health is actually healthy when we get to retirement. And Legacy Precious Metals has a revolutionary new online platform that allows you to invest in gold and silver online in real time. In a few easy steps, you can open an account online, select your metals of choice, and choose to have them stored in a vault or shipped right to your door. You'll have access to a dashboard where you can track your portfolio growth in real time anytime. You'll see transparent pricing on each coin and bar, and this puts you in complete control of your money. The platform is free to sign up for. Visit LegacyPMInvestments.com and open your account and see this new investing platform for yourself. Gold hedges against inflation and against a volatile stock market. A truly diversified portfolio isn't just more stocks and bonds, but different asset classes. This brand new platform allows you to make investments in gold and silver, no matter how small or large, with just a few clicks. Visit LegacyPM.com to get started. You can download the free investor's guide and you can also call Legacy PM Investments to talk to a portfolio expert to get expert answers to your uh, to customize your personal portfolio. So visit LegacyPMInvestments.com to get started. Tell them that Jenna sent you. All right. So joining me now is E.V. Osmond, who is the Vice President of Communications for the Susan B. Anthony for America organization. Great, great pro-life organization. And Emily, I'm so glad and grateful that you could join me uh, for this conversation because I think that Uh, Much to the chagrin of all of the leftists and all of the extreme pro-choice Democrats, the abortion conversation uh, is actually gaining attention, not only in mainstream media, but also with the upcoming presidential election. And we get to talk about it now on the merits, rather than so many in the pro-choice community just saying, well, Roe versus Wade is settled precedent. It's super precedent. Well, now it's not. And we actually get to have that conversation on the merits. Um, So what have you observed with the rhetoric that has been coming from um, multiple candidates, including Vice President Kamala Harris um, and others in terms of where we are focused as a pro-life community? Well, Jenna, you're absolutely right about that. I mean, now we get to really have this debate. Like you said, uh, the Dobbs decision took the Supreme Court's thumb off the scales of life and gave it back to the people. And now people through their state and federal elected officials get to decide. Um, But we really get to have this uh, substantive conversation. 
Um, I think you give them too much credit, honestly, Jenna, because now they're not even calling themselves pro-choice anymore. It's pro-abortion um, all the way. We saw the recent name change with NARAL even just last week, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, they have gone full abortion on demand. I've really dug in the last couple of months trying to find any uh, Democrat senator or uh, obviously Biden or anyone who can tell me what limit or single limit or week they would limit abortion on, and they are not doing it. In fact, we recently saw this with VP Kamala Harris when she was on Face the Nation. Margaret Brennan asked her, point blank, quote, uh, what week of abortion would you cut off, you know, and end quote. And she said, quote, I uh, want the protections of Roe v. Wade back in place. But when Margaret Brennan listed a few weeks that are associated with Roe, she recoiled and said, no, 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 absolutely not. Um, so we see that they do not want to talk about weeks at all. And when they do, um, they're in really murky territory because that is not their talking point that they have. We also saw uh, Jen Psaki, when she was there four days before she left the Biden administration, she was asked pointedly what week would Biden support to limit abortion? And she said she would not detail his opinion on this. You know, just like I know, if they have a specific talking point, they're going to say it. So the fact that they're evading this answer and don't want to say any boundary or limit that they would put on abortion tells you all you need to know. But we can also look at their actions. I mean, they have put forward the so-called Women's Health Protection Act. In the pro-life community, we call it the Abortion on Demand Act and uh, bill forward. And this, what this would do would go even further than Roe because it doesn't even list a timetable. It doesn't have anything. And it also, just like Roe, puts the determination of when you can kill a child in the womb in the hands of the person who profits directly, the abortionist gets to decide. And not only that, I think it's really important for your listeners and your audience to understand all of the pro-life protections that have happened since the Dobbs decision, this bill that they continue to put forward multiple times, most recently a few months ago, it would strip like a bowling ball with pins, just knock all of these pro-life protections down and would take informed consent away so the woman doesn't understand the breadth of abortion. It would take parental consent away so the parents don't even know if their kids are getting an abortion, would take ultrasounds away, would take 24 hours so you don't even get 24 hours to think about it. It's now or never for the woman. Think about that burden on her, would strip the heartbeat laws, the pain capable laws and all of the protections that the states have put forward. And then also the conscience laws of people who have moral, ethical or religious, you know, objections to performing abortions. This is crazy. It is. And I think, um, Evie, that you are so correct that this isn't pro-choice anymore because Democrats don't seem to support the choice of a mother to affirm life. I was just recently actually talking to my sister-in-law. She had twin boys for her first pregnancy, my little nephews, and they're almost five. They were actually born on the same day that Justice Kavanaugh was confirmed. Um, which to me was just a signal that um, that that a more pro-life generation was coming, and that um, was kind of the turn toward the way of uh, repealing and overturning Roe versus Wade. But she was telling me that even in some of the doctors' meetings that she went to, the younger uh, boy was completely fine. There were never issues with the pregnancy, but doctors kept trying to push. Well, the older one is um, the bigger one is a little bit more healthy. Are you sure that you don't want to vacate the other? fetus. I mean, all of these very clinical terms and there was really nothing wrong. And so she said that, she, and she's obviously a Christian and um, is very pro-life, but she was saying that it surprised her even how much in a regular doctor's appointment, they pushed that even with twins, how much more for moms um, who have a child with Down syndrome or any other um, sort of pregnancy issue. They're not pro-choice anymore. Um, this is a culture of death and trying to force abortion. And so it's come out recently as well. And, um, you know, we'll see if this, this kind of leak is accurate, but, uh, that Gavin Newsom is going to replace Diane Feinstein with the director of Emily's list, which is, um, the most just completely pro-abortion, 
um, women's advocacy group, and they specifically say on their website that they intend to place elected officials that are women that are pro-choice. And so this does signal for the Democrat Party that they are pushing abortion so that women actually choose abortion, that it's not just that they have free and fair choice. And so when you look at that and the extremism of the Democrats on this issue, What do you make of the GOP candidates that are, I think, kind of facing their own issues with um, the difference between heartbeat bills and President Trump's rhetoric, which I found, um, you know, really sad and unfortunate because he was very pro-life. And then you have, you know, some of these conversations about 15 weeks, 12 weeks. Um, To me, the, the most obvious limiting principle is to say the science shows that life begins at conception and that every human being has inherent dignity and worth and value from the moment of conception all the way until natural death. If we put that arbitrary line anywhere else, then we're arguing over something that's completely arbitrary. So how does the pro-life community um, combat the extremism of the left with not just our own talking points and in-house debates, but genuinely pro-life? Yeah, well, there's a lot there. So let me I don't want to miss the point that you made about Gavin Newsom, because this is breaking news that just came out uh, today and we reported on it, which is he overlooked three different other um, people that he could have you know, put in there and instead handpicked a uh, president of Emily's List, which is a multi-million dollar Democrat supporting abortion lobby and chose her over others to be in the spot for Senator Dianne Feinstein. Um, And that is just really goes to show that pay to play model that they're using. Um, And that is very telling and very blatant. And like you said, Emily's list right alongside NARAL, right alongside Planned Parenthood, they do not support any limits or limitations on abortion anymore at all. I mean, they're not shy about it. You can read it on their website, social media, go check it out for yourself, but it is very telling and very blatant. I mean, Planned Parenthood last year brought in an income alone, $1.97 billion with a B from their income of abortions and other things. Their services are 97% abortion. So if that tells you anything, and they are million dollar, multi-million dollar donors to the Democrats. So it's very clear why Democrats are not listing a single limit that they would put on abortion. Just follow the money. Just see where it goes. So that's easy uh, to see. For GOP candidates, it's really important for people now in this post-row landscape to really not only say I'm pro-life, but define what that means, like really be specific because this is so important to Americans. And yes, it is really important to say, look, I am for a heartbeat bill or I am for pain capable. I mean, really for us, explain the development of the child in the womb. Sometimes I think we have these conversations and we forget the science, the absolute science behind the development of the baby in the womb and what that means. I mean, we have had a banner year The mainstream media is never going to talk about this, but we can. I know you will. So just in the last year, we've had half the country, 25 states put in pro-life protections. And that's amazing. Either protecting the baby in the womb um, at 12 weeks or under, that is awesome. And that would have never been able to happen uh, under Roe. And then also, Jenna, something else that rarely gets discussed is the fact that lots of these states put in hundreds of millions of dollars in funding for pregnancy resource centers and for moms and their babies. So serving those mothers to save those babies, that is a key component that we cannot forget to talk about. And we need to hear every candidate talking about that, especially. Oh, a hundred percent. And this is where um, it has genuinely frustrated me as um, someone who is pro-life, um, especially from a specifically Christian perspective and understanding that anything other than valuing the dignity of every human life um, is is not according to science. It's also not according to the biblical worldview. It's not according to uh, any sort of limiting principle that we could even rationally justify. And so seeing how the GOP candidates are um, either really hesitant to come out and be very 
adamantly pro-life and I give huge uh, credit to Mike Pence, um, who has been very ardently pro-life. Uh, but then to have, you know, kind of this in-house debate instead of having all the GOP candidates solidified around the fact that we need to be as pro-life as possible. Sometimes in some states, that's going to mean just a heartbeat bill. On the federal level, if we even got a, you know, 15-week band, that would be an absolute miracle, in my opinion, giving, given how Washington is. Um, and so where is the pro-life community in terms of um, the Susan B. Anthony organization that you're a part of and other um, more federally driven pro-life organizations that understand that this is about whole life and resources to the mother, all of these things, when there's been a lot of questions about how national organizations haven't really been prepared to fight the fight on the state level? I think what you saw, and this was very clear in the midterms, was there were people after Roe who just did not prepare to explain what being pro-life meant. And they saw the repercussions of that. But you saw people who were very clear. I mean, look at Governor DeSantis, Governor Abbott. I mean, Governor Kemp. They went up against Stacey Abram, Beto O'Rourke. I mean, these are like full pro-abortion. That was their main messaging. And they were able to very handily in double digits defeat them with, a, you know, with a very pro-life message. So this is something that can be done. But the Americans demand specificity and clarity, and they want you to defend life. You need to be a defender of life and you will see responses. I mean, we can look at the polls and display Despite what the mainstream media and corporate media say, look, the polls still show, even an NPR poll recently showed that seven in 10 Americans want significant limits on abortion. So there is, I will admit, there is a bit of heartburn for the pro-life community because we've had 50 years of a culture of death under Roe. So we have to acknowledge that Americans, the majority, do want some sort of abortion. But the silver lining is the majority of Americans, seven in 10, like I said, NPR, Marist, all of these polls show us that they want significant limits at least by 12 to 15 weeks. So that really is what SBA Pro-Life America is saying is, look, every state should be as ambitious for life as possible. Go as far as you can to, to preserve and to save life and to serve moms. But also at the same time, can't we all agree that at least by 12 to 15 weeks, when a child can feel pain in the womb, that we shouldn't even be considering the democratic premise of up to birth state by state? Why are we even doing that? That's what they want, not what we want to save lives. Yes, so well said. And I love how you framed that, that we should be as pro-life as possible because so many people will get caught up in, you know, well, a heartbeat bill doesn't go far enough or mm -hmm. uh, so I can't advocate for that. Otherwise, I'm not pro-life. And that that to me is a defeating purpose because at least then at a heartbeat, you are at least saving all of the lives after that. And that's so much more than if we had abortion all the way up until birth, which is still in some states and just totally barbaric. Um, so for the people who are listening to this show right now and they're saying, well, I don't really know how to articulate my pro-life position well. Um, I know that I am pro-life, but when I get in debates, it's kind of hard for me uh, to answer some of these questions. How would you encourage them to explain that pro-life position well? Yeah, well, this was me. You know, I mean, I, I absolutely understand. And that's why I really, really encourage everyone to Google Voyage of Life and understand the development of the child in the womb. I mean, most people don't even realize at six weeks, there's a heartbeat, you know, and at 11, 12 weeks, we see that the child can feel pain. They have all of their organs. I mean, you go through and you explain this to someone on the other side and really show them the development of the baby. It's really hard to refute. The other side has now become the side of science deniers when it comes to pro-life and abortion. And we really need to hammer them on this and confront make them confront the science behind this. But more than that, we need to activate our voices. We need to be educating ourselves on where candidates stand in our states and federally on this issue. Are they pro-life? What does that mean? Hold their feet to the fire and make sure you understand what that means when they say it. It's not just enough to say it. And how are they serving moms and, and saving babies? That's the, the key thing there. We need to see action, action. 
Yeah. So how can people uh, support and participate in the Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America organization and uh, get involved when they really want to be pro-life, but maybe they know that um, you know, just their one voice is not enough or they feel uh, hesitant to uh, to go out and, and confront these issues themselves? I know it helps a lot to be part of an organization that's committed to some of these issues. Yeah, well, you know, we can always use the help and volunteers, and I encourage everybody to go to sbaprolife.org if you want to get involved um, in a government level. That would be wonderful and amazing, and we have a great canvassing team if you would like to join and just talk to people. It is amazing to hear the stories on the ground of our canvassers out there talking to people at the door. I mean, you would be so surprised to hear the conversations where people don't even realize what's happening on the other side. You know, they may say something like, well, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm definitely not for that. So let's educate them on where both sides are right now and what's going on in their state. And then, Jenna, just on a personal level, I'd like to share, I was one of these moms. I had two unplanned pregnancies by 22. And there were so many people that I can chart along my path that helped me um, do an open adoption with my son and then be able to to keep my daughter and to to live really a beautiful life with her. And I had one woman um, at the church who, who created a single mom's Bible study just so we could feel included. I mean, these things imprint on our lives as moms with unplanned pregnancies, and they change the trajectory of our lives. So one voice, one person, one impact, it can change lives. Oh, that is so wonderful. Thank you for sharing that story and um, for being someone who made a decision in a culture of death to choose life and to choose uh, the right thing and to listen to the people who were telling you uh, about the options that you have. Because stories like that, I think, are so incredibly powerful because so many people will say, well, you don't know what it's like or you know, you you aren't living in what I'm living. And for you to be able to openly share that story and you know, clearly um, you're someone who's still been able to have a ministry, a a career path and full life, um, but still choose life for your children. And so how old are they now? Okay. So my son is turning 18 this year, which is amazing. Oh and I have an open adoption with him. Um, and then my daughter's 15. Wow. Congratulations. I would have thought they were much younger because <laughs> you can't possibly oh, have a year old, <laughs> but um, but that's so wonderful. And, you know, um, speaking just personally as well, my my younger brother um, was, a, was a foreign adoption and came from um, Ukraine when he was two years old and his mom was an unwed teenage pregnancy and God always meant for him to be in our family. And so the choice of life in a culture there that, you know, really just uses abortion as a form of birth control. It's amazing. And um, he is just such a wonderful young man of God. And he's uh, turning 23 now, which is incredible. Amazing. So, you know, so all of these personal stories, um, it really does touch all of our lives. And um, to see that really the choice of making sure that you put um, your child ahead of anything else is so important. So thank you for sharing that and uh, for all of the work that you do. And I hope that you can come back often and tell us about um, the advantages and the movements that we've made in pro-life and how to continue advocating for it. So thank you so much. Thank you, Jenna. With inflation, the banking world collapse, and everything that Joe Biden is doing not to protect America, you need to make sure to secure your financial health, especially in retirement. And hey, if you're a millennial like me, that actually is sooner than you think. You need to start now, even if you are a millennial or a Gen Zer, to make sure that your financial health is actually healthy when we get to retirement. And Legacy Precious Metals has a revolutionary new online platform that allows you to invest in gold and silver online in real time. In a few easy steps, you can open an account online, select your metals of choice, and choose to have them stored in a vault or shipped right to your door. You'll have access to a dashboard where you can track your portfolio growth in real time anytime. You'll see transparent pricing on each coin and bar, and this puts you in complete control of your money. The platform is free to sign up for. Visit LegacyPMInvestments.com and open your account and see this new investing platform for yourself. Gold hedges against inflation and against a volatile stock market. A truly diversified portfolio isn't just more stocks and bonds, 
but different asset classes. This brand new platform allows you to make investments in gold and silver, no matter how small or large, with just a few clicks. Visit LegacyPM.com to get started. You can download the free investor's guide and you can also call Legacy PM Investments to talk to a portfolio expert to get expert answers to your uh, to customize your personal portfolio. So visit LegacyPMInvestments.com to get started. Tell them that Jenna sent you. On MyPillow's 20-year anniversary with over 80 million MyPillows sold, Mike Lindell wants to thank each and every one of you by giving you the lowest price in history on his MyPillows. You will receive a queen-size MyPillow for only $19.98. The regular price is $69.98 and just $10 more for a king size. You'll receive deep discounts on all MyPillow products such as bed sheets, mattress toppers, pet beds, mattresses, my slippers, which I love, and so much more. This is the time to try out some of the amazing products you've had your eye on from MyPillow. So go to MyPillow.com and enter promo code Jenna to receive this amazing offer on the queen size MyPillow for $19.98. You can go to MyPillow.com or call one 800 564 8475. Be sure to use the promo code Jenna. This offer comes with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money ba- money back guarantee. It's time to start getting the quality sleep you deserve. This offer comes with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money back guarantee. It's time to start getting the quality sleep you deserve. Go to mypello.com, use the promo code Jenna. When the government used emergency edicts during COVID to restrict the gathering and worship of churches, three pastors facing the risk of imprisonment, unlimited fines, and their own churches being ripped apart, took a courageous stand and reopened their doors in the face of a world that chose to comply. The Essential Church is a feature-length documentary that explores the struggle between the church and government throughout history. This fascinating story uncovers those who've sacrificed their lives throughout history for what they truly believe in. Rediscover why the church is essential and how we prove that this stand remains true from a scientific, legal, and most importantly, biblical perspective. This is not your typical movie. It'll change your life. You need to see this movie with your friends and family. The Essential Church is streaming today exclusively at SalemNow.com. That's Essential Church, streaming at SalemNow.com.